Hi everyone and welcome back to my channel. My name is Ray. Wouldn't you love to be loved in the way that you want to be loved? And isn't this something that is fundamental or feels fundamental to you, makes sense to you in some way? I mean, why don't our partners or other people understand when we wish to be touched or when we wish to be heard or when we wish to be affectionate one with the other? It makes perfect sense to us. So how come this doesn't actually work for most of us? The reason is that the way we show our love to our spouses or others isn't necessarily the way that makes them feel loved. The problem begins is that us as people, we think that others think like we do and therefore need what we need in the way that we need it. In other words, it's hard for us to think outside of our own box. For example, for some of us to be loved might just be someone that listens to us, while for others it's to be hugged or to be held on a physical level. This video is exactly about this. Dr. Gary Chapman has identified the five main love languages and the differences that we love to be loved to different degrees. Understanding these five languages in ourselves and in our partner and other people involved with us will actually give us the right tools to receive and give the affection that we desire in the manner most fitting for us. And in this video, we're going to dive into each one of them and learn how to prioritize them. And even if you're single, it's very good to know these principles or to be able to recognize them in other people for your future partners. So, stay tuned. Let me share with you a common example that will make you understand how important this subject actually is. I came to discover this system many years ago when I was working with a married couple and I saw how this phenomenon was repeated over and over in many different couples that I actually knew. The sentimental husband expressed his feelings to his partner and it was obvious that he loved her very, very much, but she didn't really feel it. The explanation she provided was that words simply didn't do it for her. Specifically, she loved getting presents like chocolates and flowers. That's the way that she feels that she needs to be loved. Now, she herself was not very communicative and hardly ever said to her husband that she loves him. So he too felt unloved. And she herself was surprised that he didn't notice at all how hard she was working at home like caring for the children, preparing meals, cleaning the house, or anything else. For her, those things expressed her love for him. Now from this we can conclude that he believed that love is expressed with words, and that's why he always told her that he loves her, and that's why he actually needs to be loved in that way, while she believes that love is expressed with action, taking care of things. And of course, they both don't understand each other's need of love, and that's where the confusion came from. You see? Partners can give and give and still miss the point. They may feel unappreciated, resentful, and frustrated by their inability to please their partners, all in while thinking that they're doing what is expected of them. The solution? Finding the appropriate language of love that your partner understands and using that to make them feel loved. Now, while you may have more than one love language, there's usually one primary or dominant love language for you. And here, I will describe the five identified love languages according to Dr. Chapman. See if you can find the top two that are most important for you, and the top two that are most important for your partner, and if you're single, the top two that were the most important to your last partner. And I'll put them on the screen here for the rest of the video, so you can easily see them and think them through. So number one, communication or affectionate words. Now, while we all enjoy compliments, some of us need a little bit more reinforcement than others. How often do you tell your partner that you love them and that you appreciate them? When was the last time you told your partner that you think that they are beautiful or that you appreciate a very specific characteristic trait that they have or simply that they look good, you know? For those of us who need affectionate words, the lack of such reinforcement can lead to resentment and you wouldn't even know about it because you probably wouldn't hear it from us. You may be thinking good thoughts about your spouse, but you're not saying anything to try to express your thoughts and let them know. Number two, attention or quality time. Now, you may be the type of person who feels connected to your spouse, 
even when you're a thousand miles or kilometers away from them. But many people do need to go on a date or a joint vacation to actually feel loved. Quality time with our partner is a great way to show them that they are important to us. Also, when you do give attention, try not to be on your phone and simply be there and listen. A conversation can be a great type of quality time. Type number three, gifts. Now, if you're the kind of person who never needs to talk, you might find it difficult to actually give gifts as well. This also depends if you were grown up with mostly boys or girls. Women do have a tendency to be more into gifts than men. The reason is simple. Because we want to think that someone is thinking about us and that we are worthy of receiving beautiful things. My wife, for example, Anya, really likes it when I buy her flowers or get her something small when I come back from teaching abroad. In my experience, it's even better to give a few smaller gifts more often or more frequently than a more expensive gift once in a while. This might not mean anything to you, but ask yourself if your partner is the type of person and test it out. Number four, completion of tasks. Just like the story I just told you about the woman that did a lot of things in the house and she thought that this is the way her husband will feel loved, a lot of people believe that through assistances and help, they can actually give or receive love. This goes, by the way, for both sexes. And you can kind of know a person. Usually it's the hyperactive people. Number five and the last one, physical contact. Now, some people need more physical affection than others to feel loved. For men, this is usually the top of the list, even though they don't necessarily know it on a conscious level. If touch is the way that makes your partner feel loved, make a special effort to initiate more contact, more physical contact. A simple touch like a hug, a kiss, or even a light touch on the arm can mean so much to these people. Now, if you want to find out what your primary love language is, you can ask yourself the following three questions. Number one, how do you usually express love for others? Number two, what do you often complain about in your relationship? For example, if you repeatedly complain that your partner never goes anywhere together with you, you probably need more quality time. If you ask them, do you love me quite often, you probably need more communication. And question number three, what are you most often asking for yourself? If you ask for more hugs and kisses, physical touch is probably the language of love that you actually crave. For example, in my world, for me, physical contact is number one. After that, it's communication, then it's attention. I couldn't care less about assignments or gifts. For my wife, Anya, it's attention, then it's gifts, then it's physical contact. Assignments and then communication. You see how different we can be? Now, imagine if we don't understand these principles in our relationship. It means that I'm trying to give her love by hugging her, because that's what I think I, she needs, while she actually needs quality time together. In the same time, she's actually trying to get me to listen more often because that's her main love language, just as an example. And you can understand how these contradictions happen in your own relationship. So, what can you do next? After you have understood your primary one or two love languages and your partner's love language, explain these simple principles to them and see where until now you've actually gone wrong and now that created friction and arguments. Again, try not to fall back into bad habits because that will just bring you back to square one without remembering any of this. Now, my friends, enjoy the love languages. I do hope it will improve your communication and relationship and make a stronger bond. My name is Ray. You can sign up to my newsletter or check out my schedule online at www.raymaor.com. Namaste, and I will see you in my next video. What?